In my last two videos, I took you with me on two Air France flights. The first was on an A350 from Atlanta to Paris, where I loved the exterior camera views on a state-of-the-art and brand new airplane. The second flight was on an A320 from Paris to Marseille, where I loved the scenery. It was so great to see iconic Paris landmarks from above, and the approach to southern France was just stunning. But what did I do after I landed in Marseille? Stay tuned to find out. If you watch my channel, you know I focus heavily on the intricacies of my flights from a view and air traffic perspective, but sometimes I'll take you along with me to show you what I did after I landed. In April and May of 2022, I took you along for a Caribbean cruise on the MSC seashore, and this time around, I'm back on the high seas as we go together on a four-night Mediterranean cruise on the Costa Pacifica from Marseille. I've arrived at the port of Marseille, checked in my luggage, and I'm making my way over to the 952 foot long Costa Pacifica. I am one of over 3,700 passengers, and for this voyage, my cabin is in a suite, and I made my way there immediately upon embarkation. I love the color scheme that Costa uses on this ship. It bears much similarity to other Costa ships, and is very inviting. My suite is a spacious suite with a large bathroom for a cruise ship. And as a suite passenger, complimentary hors d'oeuvres await me as soon as I enter the room. I know I'm gonna be in for a very comfortable ride here. Immediately after checking out my suite, which came with my own butler, I decided to check out the ship's spa area. This place has it all, from getting a haircut, to getting a massage, to getting your teeth whitened. All of your beauty and relaxation needs can be found right here, and the environment is very inviting. Even if you don't use any of the services here, a trip to just visit the spa area is a feast for the eyes. During my cruise, I made sure that I did come back for a very relaxing massage, but for now, the anticipation is building because we're getting ready to depart. We're in France today, and tomorrow we'll be in Spain, and you're coming along with me. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm on the Costa Pacifica out of Marseille. I'm standing outside of my balcony because I want you to witness our bon voyage from the port of Marseille. Our thrusters are propelling us away from the long dock as we are the first cruise ship to leave this evening. Today in port are two other Costa ships and one MSC ship. Departing the port is fairly simple as it doesn't require any U-turns for leaving. This port is protected by a large breakwater and will pass through the breakwater's opening before we head out into the open waters of the Mediterranean Sea. Aboard our large vessel is a maritime pilot who knows the port well and is guiding our ship out of the harbor into open waters. The pilot, as much as he'd love to take a cruise, will only be with us during the first few minutes of this cruise, so a small pilot boat parallels our track to be able to retrieve the pilot once we're out of the harbor. It's always a unique process to watch from the ship, and it can be risky in rough seas, but the Mediterranean is calm this evening, making the procedure go smoothly and quickly. And now we're off to Barcelona. As this Turkish A319 above from Istanbul arrives in Marseille, we leave the French Riviera. As we leave the coast, inside my beautiful suite is some more information about our cruise. On my TV screen is a camera view of forward and aft so I can see the back and front of the ship without having to leave my suite. There's also a map showing where we are. The map shows the past route of this ship and we can see that the ship came to Marseille from Savona, Italy. Well, here's a farewell to Marseille, France. What a beautiful city. I really enjoyed my stay there, but now it's time to head on over to Barcelona, Spain. Once the sun set, I checked my Costa card to verify that I'd be having dinner in the Club Blue Moon, which is a restaurant reserved just for sweet passengers. This is an Italian ship, so much of the food was Italian and it was delectable. The friendly and attentive staff was always accommodating, and since everything is paid for in advance, if I wanted something else off the menu, delivery at my table was no issue at all. Before I went to sleep in my suite, I checked to see where we were on the TV screen, and we were right on course in the Mediterranean headed to Spain. The next morning, I woke up early and saw the lights of Barcelona in the distance, and as we got closer, the sun began to rise, and I began to prepare for my overview sightseeing tour of the capital of Catalonia. So I quickly made my way through some of the public areas of the ship to the gangplank, where I boarded a bus for a tour of the city. What a gorgeous city Barcelona is. I can see why it's a popular place to visit. The city streets are unlike other cities in Europe, with its very unique architecture. Of particular note are the facades of Antoni Gaudi. 
They are such unique works of art on a massive scale. Welcome to Barcelona, Spain. The most massive work of Gaudi is the Church of the Sagrada Familia. Started in 1882, it's still unfinished to this day. I had to get back to the ship for its departure time, and I decided to check out the different dining options for the rest of the cruise. This large space is one of the main dining rooms, and I also happened to come across one of the specialty restaurants with its intimacy and unique food offerings on display. Shushino is a sushi restaurant I found for quick bites. Looks quite interesting. This is a gorgeous ship with intricacies throughout, as well as vast spaces such as this theater. While back on board, I decided to have lunch in the Sweet Guest's restaurant. I made sure I took a seat near the window because as an aviation enthusiast, I was able to see arrivals to the Barcelona airport, like this United 767-400 coming in from Newark. Lunch with a view. This is an ideal setting for plane spotting here in Barcelona today. After lunch, I did some walking around the ship. It was a majestic day, and I found it comfortable to be both indoors as well as outdoors. There were so many places to relax on board before I went to dinner in the restaurant again for my octopus meal. From there, it was off to the ship's large theater for an evening of entertainment as we pulled out of the board of Barcelona for an upcoming day at sea the next day. We're now en route to Savona, Italy on the Ligurian coast. After a good night's sleep, I decided to go to the spa area for a much-needed haircut given by the very friendly beauty staff. Okay, haircut's done and time to enjoy a day at sea. We have traveled 209 nautical miles from the port of departure, and 192 nautical miles are left to reach our destination. We are currently sailing with road 101 at speed 10 knots, and we are about 24 miles of France coast. Weather conditions for today's navigation are wind of southeast first 6, sea of southeast first 5, the outside temperature is plus 15 degrees. The sky is cloudy. The forecast for tomorrow will be the following. Wind of northwest for 6, sea of northwest for 5. The sky is cloudy and approximate temperature plus 8 degrees. Thank you for your kind attention and I wish you a wonderful sea day on board of Costa Pacifica. Okay, we're en route from Barcelona to Savona. However, the ship just made a left hand turn. As you can see, there's land over there. We're heading right towards Marseille right now. Marseille is a stop after Savona. I'm a little confused right now. Okay, we're turning back to the right. Perhaps the captain wants to get us a little bit closer to the shoreline for a better view. I don't know, it was kind of an abrupt turn to the left and now we're on course again. Well, that was a bit odd, but I'm glad we're headed toward Italy now. Why we didn't go in a straight line confused me, but there's no need to worry about it now because today is a day at sea and I've made the decision to have lunch at the specialty restaurant Archipelago today. As I dined here, I was the only person in the intimate space the entire time. Guests are given three menus to choose from, from three different chefs from three separate countries, France, Spain, and Italy. I chose the Italian menu. It was for certain the best meal that I had on the ship, but it did come at an additional cost. The meal was so filling that I really didn't do anything at all till dinner time, and at dinner I chose the regular dining venue. The meal there was just fantastic. I even ordered a special lobster dish for the evening, as promoted by the staff. After dinner, it was off to some of the public spaces on board for an evening of entertainment. We're on our way to our final destination as we navigate the calm waters of the Mediterranean Sea. The next morning, we arrived at our final port of call, Savona, a city of around 61,000. This is a hub for Costa Cruise Lines as it serves as a maritime gateway to the Italian province of Liguria. From this side of the ship, I had a great view of the docking procedure, and as soon as the ship was secured to the dock, I worked my way off the ship to an awaiting tour bus because I'm going to visit Genoa. From the little that I saw of Savona from the bus, it seemed like a charming town, and I wish I had more time to visit, but we're headed to the capital of the region, Genoa. I ensured that I took a seat on the right side of the bus because I wanted to take in as much sea as I could. You know how important seat selection is for me if you watch my channel often.
While en route, I caught a glimpse of the Genoa Airport, which has a runway on a peninsula similar to the runway in Marseille that I landed on to get here. Another reason why I sat on the right side of the bus. While I've been to Italy dozens of times, it was my first visit to Genoa, and I have to say, I was really impressed. Medieval, Renaissance, Baroque, and Gothic architecture are common all over the city. I really enjoyed this little spot, like a small fishing village in a big city, despite the windy weather. It's a little cold here today, but I am thoroughly enjoying Genoa. Genoa is a busy city filled with stores, restaurants, apartments, and businesses. It's New World culture in a setting of a bygone era. Before leaving Genoa, my bus made a one hour long stop and my number one priority was to have a regional dish, pasta with pesto sauce, and I found a quaint restaurant for an ideal Ligurian lunch. After that, it was back on the bus for the ride back to Savona for our last departure before the cruise terminates. To get out of the port of Savona, our ship needs to go backwards. There's no room within the harbor to turn around, so this takes some careful coordination on the bridge. Once we reach the end of the pier, we can turn around and then proceed on course. We're now bound for Marseille. After getting some rest, I spent the final evening on board shopping. I toured the empty theater once again and the main atrium. I then went back to the Sweet Guest's restaurant for the final dinner aboard. As always, it was a fantastic meal. I can't say I had any bad food on the ship. The next day it was back to the port of Marseille for the end of the cruise. It was a great journey aboard a magnificent ship with top-notch ports of call. Would I recommend it to you? Absolutely yes. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed sharing it with you and taking a break from my aviation videos, but I do need to take a trip back to the United States, so stay tuned for my next video where I take you flying with me once again.